Well, our plan for these sermons on the parables of Jesus is to look particularly at the parables recorded here in Matthew 13. Perhaps in time, we'll come back to this series and extend it and and add in other parables from elsewhere in the Gospels. But for now, we're considering the seven parables of Matthew 13. And having thought of the parable of the sower last time, this evening, we're thinking of the parable of the weeds, also known as the parable of the wheat and the tares. It's a parable that's only recorded here, only recorded in Matthew's gospel. It's worth mentioning all of these seven parables here, Matthew 13. uh, They share a theme together. A common theme, uh, the kingdom of heaven. Uh, Each one of these parables, uh, they're designed to teach us more about the kingdom. Uh, You could even say they're designed to, to even correct our thinking, to correct some misconceptions about the kingdom of heaven. For instance, last week, the parable of the sower, uh, Jesus described how there would be a mixed response to the sowing of the word of the kingdom. Uh, We shouldn't expect everyone everywhere to hear the word of God uh, and bear fruit. Uh, This evening, we're discovering that though Christ is Lord over all, evil is still a constant reality. And we see it all around us. And as long as the day of judgment is still ahead of us, there will always be opposition against the kingdom of heaven. That's what this parable is is about, really. The coexistence of, of good plants alongside weeds. It describes a field of wheat mixed with weeds. Let's think about the parable again, just just briefly together, before we consider some lessons from it. Jesus begins verse 24 by comparing the kingdom of heaven to a man who went out sowing good seed in his field. But later, while everyone was sleeping under cover of darkness, his enemy comes and sows weeds, weeds among the wheat. There's many commentators who think these weeds uh, were something called darnel. Darnel, a kind of weed that that still grows in the Middle East, a very invasive, very damaging plant, Uh, a weed that in its early stages, it looks almost exactly like wheat. Uh, And in fact, it's only when the grain is mature that you can distinguish between what's weed and what's wheat. And so in the parable, when the weeds eventually become apparent, uh, we read of the workers. uh, They ask the master, well, should we not gather up the weeds? Uh, Do do you want us to go up and pull up the weeds, master? I mean, that's, that's what we do, isn't it? Well, that's what we're supposed to do in our gardens and our flower beds and our window boxes and our yards. We're to try and get rid of the weeds. But here's the surprising part of the parable. and Almost all the parables have a a little surprise, a little twist in them. And here's the surprise. Jesus describes this master and he says, no, no, don't pull up the weeds. Because if you gather them up, you could easily damage the wheat. And it's all to do with the root systems have likely become intertwined. He says, let them grow together until the harvest. He says, when the harvest comes, weeds will be gathered only to be burned. On the other hand, the wheat will be gathered safely into the barn. That's the parable, the parable of the weeds. The fascinating thing about this parable, just like last week's, the parable of the sower, We have an explanation given. We give thanks for the explanation. Uh, Only two parables 
uh, we have explanations. Last week's and this week's, the parable of the sower, the parable of the weeds. So verses 36 to 43, Jesus explains the parable. He says, the one who's been sowing the good seed, he's the son of man. Uh, that's a self-reference for Jesus. It's his favorite title for himself. The one he used most often comes from Daniel 7, son of man. The field is the wor world. The good seed, well, they're the sons of the kingdom. The bad seed, they're the sons of the evil one. So the wheats and the weeds are, are people, in other words. People, those in the kingdom and those outside the kingdom. Those who belong to Christ and those who do not belong to Christ. And the enemy who, who's sowing the weeds, well, he's the devil, Jesus says. And at the end of the age, there's going to be a harvest. The final judgment. And every weed, everyone who's not part of the kingdom, will be thrown into the fiery furnace. But the sons of the kingdom will be safely gathered in. Now there are some lessons our Lord is teaching us here. We want to highlight this evening three, three principles this parable impresses upon us. Three, three truths that should help us as we live in this world. Sons and daughters of the kingdom. Alongside sons and daughters of the evil one. Uh, three truths that should help uh, even those in, in church leadership uh, this evening. Uh, firstly, we live in a lifelong battle with evil. I think that's the first thing we can, we can pull out from this parable. We live in a lifelong battle with evil. We see at the outset, Jesus is busy. He's sowing. He's establishing the kingdom of heaven, sowing good seed. And there's people responding to it, growing in faith. That's a, it's a lovely aside to ponder, isn't it? Our Lord Jesus, the Son of Man, he's the one who's, who's planting Christians in the world. He's the one who's establishing his people. He's the one who's building his church. If you're a believer this evening, you are because the Son of Man has made you a believer. You're, you're the work of his hands. But at the same time, there, there's, there's also an enemy, this parable reminds us. Christ's kingdom is not without opposition. And the enemy, the evil one, Satan, he is working against the kingdom of heaven. The Christian life, in other words, is a war zone. A war zone. And so you have wheat, but you also have weeds. And they exist side by side. And isn't that what we find as we look around us, friends? Isn't that what we see all around us in this world? We see good and evil. We see wheat and we see weeds. Notice in the parable, the enemy, as he sows his bad seed, he does so with the purpose of spoiling the harvest. He wants to ruin the farmer's work. He wants to make the farmer look bad. It's an act of vandalism, plain and simple. Isn't that Satan's device still today? He will do what he can to ruin and to vandalize and to do what he can to, to damage the reputation of the Lord God. Uh, he'll do what he can to trouble the people of God, to, to wreak havoc in their lives. And just as this enemy came under cover of darkness, so our enemy is cunning and deceptive. He wants to disrupt the kingdom of heaven. He's committed to fight against the work of Jesus Christ. And in many ways, that's the story of the Bible, isn't it? Uh, from Genesis 3 onwards, 
two opposing kingdoms fighting against each other. And we'll never make sense of this world, friends, if, if we don't look at it really through this lens. Uh, if someone tells you that the moment you become a Christian, you'll get your best life now, everything will be great. Well, they're lying to you, friends. Because the moment we become Christians, we're putting a target on our backs, really. And we become those opposed by the evil one every single day. I once heard it put this way. Sometimes we think when we've become Christians, we've boarded a cruise ship. But in reality, we've boarded a battleship. A battleship. It's not easy. Hardship will come. Maybe you're not a Christian here this evening. And it's great to have you here. But listen, we want to share the truth with you about what it means to, to follow Jesus. If you become a Christian, you'll face opposition from Satan. He's going to make your life miserable at times. You've got to know that. And this parable, it shows us, as long as we're this side of the judgment, good and evil will live side by side. We shouldn't expect a golden age when all the weeds will be extinguished, wiped out. That's what the disciples were expecting, wasn't it? They were assuming the great messianic kingdom would come and, and wipe over all. Jesus is, is correcting that understanding. He says, don't expect the weeds to, to disappear. But neither should you be fearful. The weeds will be wiped out either. Isn't that an encouragement? The wheat, there will always be wheat. The church will never be destroyed. There's a certain harvest to come. So let's understand this simple but important point. There will be wheat and weeds right to the end. Christ's kingdom is here, but it's not yet fully here. It's, it's already, but it's, it's still not yet. We have to live with that realism. Coexistence of wheat and weeds. A lifelong battle with evil. That's the first thing. We have a lifelong battle against evil. The second thing, we have a God who is so patient. We have a God who is so patient. Jesus describes the servants of the master. They are troubled by the sight of the weeds. They want to go and pull them all up. Let's go, they say. Let's get rid of the weeds. But the master says, no, no, just, just wait. Just wait, servants. If you pull up the weeds, there's the danger you pull up the wheat along with them. Let them both grow together. Then at harvest, we'll separate them. Now, what's Jesus saying here? Well, isn't he reminding us? Isn't he reminding us that our God is so patient? He's so full of Long suffering. Think, think of those words from 2 Peter 3 at, at the start of our service. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. If the master of the harvest gives the command to his harvesters to, to pull up the weeds, well, he's cutting short the day of salvation, isn't he? In other words, the harvest is delayed because there's still souls to be saved. He's being patient. At the door of salvation, he's, he's leaving open. He, he's leaving still a, a day of grace. And the sun shines and, and the rain falls and there's seed time and harvest time today, all because he's still He's still being so patient. Wait, he says. 
Isn't that a word we, we need to be reminded of? Isn't, isn't that a word we need to hear today? We were thinking this morning just how we long for, for suffering and misery to, to come to an end. How we want wickedness and all evil to be stopped. We're tired of the delay and we pray, come Lord Jesus. But what Jesus is, is teaching us here is, well, you may well have to settle in for the long haul. Trust me, the harvest will come. It will come in its own good time. But you have to trust me. You have to be patient. My elect, in other words, have, have not all been gathered in. I think there's a word here for us in our churches too, in our congregations. There are some who interpret this parable as only speaking to us in the context of church life. That it's only about hypocrites in the church, pretenders, counterfeits, people who appear to look like Christians for a time, but in the end, by their fruit, you will know them. And so there are some, they see this parable as only speaking about weeds in the church. And when Jesus says, wait, leave the weeds until harvest, well, they see that as a, as a proof text against the idea of church discipline, against the idea of, of elders and church discipline. But it's, it's important to see verse 38 of the chapter, uh, when Jesus describes this field, he identifies this field as the world, not, not the church, the world. So I, I don't think we can narrow it down exclusively to church life. And if we were to take that position of scrapping discipline altogether on account of that interpretation, well, we would be flying in the face so much of the rest of Scripture, wouldn't we? Even, even later in Matthew, Matthew 18, Jesus speaks about how to go about at church discipline in a loving, gentle, cautious, even patient way. And isn't that then what this parable teaches us? Uh, to be patient ourselves. It should grieve us uh, to find counterfeits in the church. It should grieve us enormously to, to find false believers. We should be broken hearted about that, about hypocrisy. In the church. People who profess Christ. But live scandalous lives. And we need to recognize that until glory. There will never be a perfect church here on earth. But the problem is. It's not always easy. For the servants of the sower. To distinguish. Between weeds and wheat. Uh, only the Son of Man can see the heart. It's not always easy for the servants of the sower to distinguish between wheat and weeds. The Son of Man sees the heart. And we need to be careful. Church leaders need to be careful about rushing in, acting hastily, rushing into judgment, pulling up weeds. Because there is the danger of uprooting the wheat. Alongside them. Doesn't mean that we should never take church membership and discipline seriously. Of course, of course we should. Many scriptures are clear in that. Here's a word about patience, about being slow, careful when it comes to discipline. The danger is, is damaging wheat. And so often we can end up doing more harm than good, breaking many a bruised reed. And in zeal to gather up weeds, we can be in danger of uprooting wheat along with them. It was J.C. Ryle who said, Surely there is deep truth in the charitable saying of Augustine, Those who are weeds today, may be wheat tomorrow. Those who are weeds today 
maybe wait tomorrow. We have a God who is patient and there's lessons there for us. We have a God who is so patient. But listen, we should not misunderstand his patience. We should not presume upon his patience. Now when Jesus is, is telling these servants they need to wait, he's not saying, well, we, we turn a blind eye to all of this. He's simply saying, just wait. Just wait. I will take care of this. Judgment is coming. Justice will be brought. So let's think thirdly. We will one day be separated from evil. We will one day be separated from evil. Surely that idea of separation comes out very strongly in this parable. Verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first, bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. There's a day of separation coming, he says. And the present mixed state of weeds and wheat will not last forever. Uh, there's a coming day of dividing, a day of judgment, a day of harvesting. And the Lord will send forth his angels and they will make no mistake. Weeds will be gathered up and wheat will be gathered up. And friends, they'll, they'll be separated. They'll be separated then irreversibly, eternally. And all the wicked, the ungodly, the unconverted, the unbelieving, all the weeds, Jesus says, will be thrown into the fiery furnace. We understand this, don't we, to, to be a picture of hell. A place of eternal anguish. A place of unspeakable suffering and punishment. A place of torment, of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus describes. That's his most frequent expression for, for describing hell, by the way. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping. How often in your life have you really wept? And I mean wept with your heart breaking, with grief swelling within you that you feel as if you're about to burst. Think of it. Jesus describes hell as a place of uncontrolled sobbing, tears. Not only that, but, but gnashing of teeth. Picture of the wicked grinding their teeth in, in rage, in helpless anger at themselves, at, at God. A place of intolerable, unending, Unending pain. Who can imagine it? Who can imagine it? Being forever consciously punished by an infinitely holy God. No escape. No exit. No rescue. The unbeliever should tremble when they read this parable. They should tremble as they see the horror that, that awaits them unless they, they repent and, and are converted. But in an equally vivid contrast, the godly, the converted should, should see what awaits them. While, while the weeds are gathered up and thrown into the furnace, Jesus describes the wheat being gathered up. And being brought safely, safely into his barn. Verse 43. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. These are, these are lovely words. What a glorious thing it will be 
when the wheat is gathered into the barn, the Son of Man's barn at the final harvest, and it will be radiant. This wheat, it will be breathtaking. It will be beautiful, reflecting the glory of the only begotten Son, shining with joy as it beholds the face of its Savior. It's the eternal blessedness of believers. Could there be any more stark contrast painted? The believer should take comfort then from from this parable, from the happiness, the, the blessedness that lies ahead. Perfect communion of saints. And in the conflict between God and Satan, well, Satan, he loses out big time, doesn't he? The seed of the evil one will be weeded out, thrown into the fiery furnace, and God wins, and justice prevails, and Jesus is assuring us of he will deal with evil fully, finally, and forever. And every trace of evil will be removed. The wheat will be without any evil among it. J.C. Ryle again puts it, How fine will the wheat look in the barn of God when at length the weeds are taken away. How brightly will grace shine. So what an encouragement this should be for us this evening. And what a parable this is. Jesus finishes in verse 43. He who has ears, let him hear. In other words, Listen carefully to these things. Consider these things. Take them to heart. And let us lift our eyes to, to the Son of Man himself, who for us, friends, endured that furnace. Endured that furnace of the Father's divine wrath at Calvary, that, that you and I might be spared. Let's take heed from this parable. Because hell is real. And time is short. And we're living in a world that's ripe for harvest. You do not need to face the destiny of the weeds. You can shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. If you will only turn to Jesus. He who has ears. Let him hear. Amen.